I want to speak to you the best that I know how, uh, how the prophets prophesied uh, what we've already seen. For example, in Joel, there was a prophecy that in the last days God would pour out his spirit on all flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. And when the Holy Spirit fell in the upper room, I'm sure they looked at one another, and the first question was, was probably asked is, what is this? What, what is God doing? The Spirit of the Lord came down as fire. and sat upon each of them. They spake with heavenly languages, and they prophesied, and they had boldness in speaking the word of God. And they were possessed. Something laid hold of them. And I'll tell you what, when the Holy Ghost comes, everybody in the house knows he's there. When the Holy Ghost comes, he manifests himself. And so the disciples, I'm sure, questioned one another. And those who knew the word of the Lord, those who studied the prophets, said, this is that. This, this is what we to expect. This is what they said. This was what Joel said years ago, that in the last days, and Christ said, told us that these are the last days. Folks, this, when Jesus came, that was the beginning, the first of the last days. And now we are living in the last of the last days. There was a former reign that was prophesied, a former reign of the Holy Spirit coming down. And he said he poured on all flesh. And they knew it because they studied the scriptures. And they knew and they understand the prophet Joel said this. And what we're seeing now what we're experiencing now is the fulfillment of all the prophets. And folks, in one way or another, all the prophets from Isaiah, Isaiah especially, and you can find it in Jeremiah and Ezekiel, and all the minor prophets, we likewise can hear and see and know and understand what has been prophesied about our time. Prophesied now. Now, you know all of the prophecies of, of the of the darkness, the gross darkness that has been prophesied in the Bible in the last days. I'm going to take you into one of the prophets, the minor prophets. I'm going to take you to the last chapter of the Old Testament, the last book of the Old Testament, the last chapter in the Old Testament, the last six verses in the Old Testament, and show you what the Bible says, what the prophet Malachi said is to come. Now, if the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit, there's a first rain and there's a latter rain. The first rain was at Pentecost. Now, before Jesus comes, I believe this with all my heart, and in the last of the last days, the Holy Spirit is not going to whimper out. He's not going to come to a generation, the beginning of the last days, and pour out His Spirit around the world. He's not going to do that and in the last days, allow the devil to have power and authority over the saints of God. He's not going to leave his church empty and dry. He's not going to leave us sick and afflicted with no authority, with no healings, with no movement of the Holy Spirit, and people just holding on till Jesus comes. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what the prophets prophesy. If you have your Bible, and I hope you do, Malachi, the fourth chapter, the last book in the Old Testament, all six verses I read, beginning to read. Now, folks, believe me now. And, and the scripture said, believe the prophets and you will be blessed. Believe the prophets. I have every right to tell you that this is for today, just as surely as Peter could stand up and say, this is what Joel said, and we are seeing it fulfilled, I can tell you this is what Malachi said, and we're going to see it fulfilled. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. The day that cometh shall burn them up, and the Lord of hosts that it shall lead, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Now, let's stop right there for a minute and look this way. We are living in this very time right now. We are in the oven. Things are getting very hot economically, socially, spiritually, in all ways. 
Behold, the day is coming that it shall burn as an oven, and all who do wickedly shall be stubborn. Stubble. Folks, this is a prediction. This is a prophecy in the last days of a fiery holocaust in all areas of society. Ten years ago, I released a book called uh, America's Last Call, a fiery economical, an economic holocaust, a fiery economic holocaust is coming. I pleaded and I warned that there was going to be a breaking of the housing bubble, that there would be sellers and very few buyers. I've been in conferences and pleaded with congregations to uh, stop flipping their houses and sell everything and flipping and, and that the crash was coming and there was going to be a fiery, fiery holocaust. I, 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 I pleaded and begged about fires I saw coming to the Northeast, especially New York City, a thousand fires. And I, I honestly believe that we are within a few years of seeing that fulfilled. And I don't... It, I told you for a little while, you, you may say, I don't want to hear any of this gloom, but this is what Prophet Malachi is talking about. He said it's going to burn like an oven. And, and, and uh, I, I was called a doomsday preacher, and, and actually, the ministry here in the United States just about closed up on me. Now, overseas, I was holding conferences the last five years, and I think I've been in 50 countries around the world uh, preaching and warning but I, I think I've only been one or two conferences in the United States because there were no invitations. Now, it's changing now a lot. It, 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 you know, people are calling the office ordering the books now. And I don't have anything in my heart saying, I told you so. I don't have anything in my heart that says, I warned you. I, I spend most of my time in prayer now pleading for messages of hope. And, and I, I said from this pulpit a number of years ago, less than 10 years ago, that when this fire came, those of us who'd been warning would become preachers of hope, that we would be the encouragers. And these that have been preaching prosperity and that there's nothing to be concerned about. Just, you know, it's going to be like this. It's going to, the stock market's going to go to 30,000 and, and all of these things that we were hearing and, and buy your house and flip it and, and, and uh, put every bit of mortgage you can put on your house and cash out. And people were cashing out, going on vacations and spending for boats and everything. And the thing, the thing was going crazy. And I, I said that those preachers are then going to start preaching doom because people are going to say, you cheated us. And, and now they're going to get in here so that they say, no, we didn't cheat you. We're telling you now. But they're, they're saying it when it's too late. It's too late. But you see, he said the wicked are going to be burned. The wicked are going to be affected. Now, this is not just talking about homosexuality. This is not just about uh, pornography and, and fornication and, and drugs and alcoholism, it's more than that. It's arrogance. It, it, it's a spirit of proud arrogance. They that do wickedly. Wickedness is, is sticking your nose up at God. It is called arrogance. Now, how arrogant can a society be that can... Rip out of this book everything that is moral and holy and clean and reflects the heart of God. How is it that we, we seem to have no power to stop our courts from legalizing marriages between men and men, women and women? And now this past month in California, they're bringing this to the courts, the man-boy associations, men having sex with boys, want to be considered a minority with rights. How long did we think, how long did this society think that we could get, a low, get by with this and that God is not there, God will not do anything about it, He will not bless, He will not curse, He, will, he won't do anything because God is non-existent. And that's what the message is. It's arrogance. And God says, I'm going to deal with that wickedness. That's wickedness. 
That is something that takes people beyond the, the realm of grace because they harden their hearts and, the, and, and sometimes, oftentimes, grace cannot reach it because of the hardness of their hearts. The European Union has taken God out of the Constitution and they have declared that the European Union is a secular union and they have said God is dead. In essence, God is dead. And now we have pushed God out of our schools. We have pushed God out of our courts. We're trying to push God out of our society. Now, when you say we, I'm talking about Americans. Now, hear me, please. I love America. I love my country. I thank God for America. It's still the freest nation on earth. But we have stuck our nose up at God. We have dared God to act. We, we have lived as if the, the starving people around the world can go as they please and we will live high on the hog and we will, we, we will just soak in all of this prosperity and we will have everything in our hearts desire and, and in the process mock God and say, we did this on our own strength through our own mental inventions. We have come to this great place, mightiest nation, number one. And God says, no. The prophet said, the day shall burn as an oven. And this wickedness in Hebrew suggests arrogance. The prophet Malachi's prophecy are being fulfilled right before our eyes. America has outsinned Noah's generation. America and the world today, there's more wickedness in Europe, I believe, now than in the United States. There's a horrible wickedness sweeping over Europe, England. And, and now God is shaking every nation. Ireland had this big bubble, this housing bubble, bigger than the United States, and now it's broken. And, and, and Ireland now is heading for a deep recession, and England and Germany and all over the world. And now Russia's being shaken because of the, of, of the cheating and the arrogance and the robbery, the neglect of the poor and, and uh, mafia types driving around in their Rolls Royces, ignoring the nation of poverty. And we, we see this shaking of the whole world. We see wickedness being dealt with, and that's what God is doing. Behold, darkness. Here's what Isaiah said. Darkness shall... He, he's talking about the end times. Darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness the people. And gross here in Hebrew is doom, gloom. Gloom. Now, Jeremiah Give glory to the Lord your God before he caused darkness. And before your feet stumble on the dark mountain. And while you look for light, it turns into the shadow of death. And it will become gross darkness. In other words, it will be an hour of gloom. Malachi said, in that day, in that day of gloom. And I'll tell you the good news in just a moment. This week's Economist magazine on the cover has a cartoon of the Statue of Liberty not standing holding the flame, but she is sitting dejected, her face in her hand and the flame laying on the ground. And the headline says, Unhappy America. And here's what the people told the writers of the Economist magazine. A word for word. There's a furious, one woman said, there's a furious gloom sweeping the whole world. Another said, we've been greedy for so long and it's caught up with us. Another said, it's too late, the slide is on. Another, America is in a horrible mood. We're slouching towards Sodom and Gomorrah. Another said, the economy is tottering and the Echo, eco fanatics are telling us the world is cooking. Folks, we have come to that place, and it has to be said I have never, ever preached on a prophetic word without a broken heart and a contrite spirit.
with the weeping inside. Because you see, I don't want to talk like this, and Malachi didn't want to talk like this, but this is, this is what he said is coming. And it is, it is totally being fulfilled. Isaiah spoke of our day in chapter 24 of Isaiah. He will turn the entire world upside down. He's going to bring down the proud. There will be, there will be confusion everywhere. And all the merrymakers will now be sighing. All the joy will be silenced. All laughter will cease. And all will be shaken as an olive tree is shaken. And the habits of the earth shall fear. Folks, you, you'll find it hard to find a smile. Our, our, our advanced team, our advanced team just came back from one of the major cities of Russia. Just got back yesterday. A team of three. And they said, it, th this is one of the major cities in Russia. And th they said that everybody, there's such economic despair. People are only getting half of what they need to live and, and the cost of, of gasoline and electricity and everything is going out of sight. And they said, you couldn't find a smile anywhere. You couldn't find a smile. Except in the house of God. And in the house of God, they were singing and dancing and shouting in the church that they attended. But there was, there, there, there was no smile. That's the very thing the prophets have warned about us. Joel said, is not the meat, and in Hebrew means prosperity, cut off from before our eyes? Yes, joy and gladness have been cut off from the house of our God. Joy is withered from the sons of men. You say, okay, Pastor Wilkerson, that's enough. Let's get... You said you've got something for us. I do. It's not mine. It's the prophet, Jer uh, prophet Malachi. I was thinking, what if Malachi were living today? <clears throat> now, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, raised from the dead and enabled to come. And he's a visiting. I've got John Bueno of with me here today, my dear friend, in charge of missionaries, hundreds and hundreds of missionaries all over the world, just got back from the Congo. And I got to thinking, what if Malachi was our visitor today? And he spoke. And he told you all that I'm telling you now. But he describes it. He goes into detail about how, you know, you, you, all other problems, times like these, the roots were not touched because these institutions came back to life and, they, and then people say this is just another like that. We're, we're, we're just, it'll just be maybe five years, ten years, it'll, everything will be recovered. But if he, what if he told you he's got down to the roots this time? And we sit stunned like you're sitting here now. And to tell you the truth, my knees tremble. But Malachi... The prophet Malachi would give you verse 1 and go into detail. And I believe then he'd close the word, the prophets, and all of the scripture that he had available. And I believe he'd get down, go around stage, and start walking down the front of this church and a twinkle in his eye. And he'd start up this owl. And he'd start shouting, verse 2. But, boy, that's a big word. <laughs> but unto you that fear my name. And Malachi would say, wait a minute. That message you just heard is not for you. Had nothing to do with you. Yes, there'll be collateral damage. You, you, you and I, we'll be, we will, there'll be suffering. But there's a word for you. And this word will hold you. This word will keep you. Let the mountains fall into the sea. Let the economy shake and fall. Let everything that can be shaken be shaken. But for you who fear the Lord, the son of righteousness is going to arise with healing in his wings. He said, in that darkest hour, when it looks hopeless, 
And when there's fear on all sides and everything is gloom and doom, you're going to see the sun shining. The Lord Jesus Christ himself is going to rise in greater revelation than you and any generation in the past has ever seen. We are going to have the greatest revelation of Jesus Christ and his keeping saving power. That That's not a cliche, folks. We base the whole Pentecostal experience on the prophecy Joel. In other words, this is the prophetic word. And, and for ever, ever since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we've stood on it. The prophet has spoken and we have seen it and we have lived it. And I'm telling you now, this is the word of the prophet and it's the word for today. Even though it's been fulfilled in other generations, it is going to be fulfilled in its greatness and its majesty and its power in our time, and it's happening, and it's happening now, and I'm telling you, I agree, I stand on the prophecy of Malachi, that in these last days, there's going to be a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and there are going, God is going to restore to us faith for healing. I'm going to give you three words that many of us don't even like to repeat. We, we are embarrassed by them. Signs, wonders, miracles. And the one word we fear more than anything else is manifestations. Because, I'll tell you why. Because of all the tomfoolery, because of all of the foolishness over the years where certain healing evangelists were trying to sell healings. One was trying to sell healings for cancer for $1,000 over television until the courts laid hold of him, found out that he was drunk all the time anyhow. And, and, you know, I, I've seen so much, you've seen so much of absolute foolishness and, and manifestations that were absolute flesh. And so we have backed away from healing. And many of them say, I have prayed for healing and I don't receive it. And so we back away and there's a nagging something in us that says, does God really heal today? I hear more and more people asking these questions. Uh, is this all there is to it? Is, is the focus in the last day on suffering and pain and affliction? I've preached so much on pain. Pastor Carter, all the pastors, we, we have been trying to find everything in the scripture to encourage the saints in their suffering, in their affliction, and in their, their economic uh, turmoil. And, and the questions are being asked, does God heal anymore? Why are so many hurting? Why are so many sick and so many that apparently are not being healed? It's because we've allowed the devil to ramroad over our faith. We have pulled back because we, 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 we have not pressed in. We've not taken our authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and we no longer, honestly, we no longer believe the Holy Ghost is being poured out. I have to confess to you that, that I've been a little bit afraid of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit to break out in this church because it would drive people away. Well, folks, I still stand against the foolish manifestations of the flesh where people trying to bring attention to themselves and just flop on the floor or, 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 or try to run around the building without an anointing of the Holy Spirit. But if the Holy Ghost really is upon you and the Holy Ghost does it, we should not be afraid of manifestations, true manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And the manifestation that I'm talking about that will accomplish accompany this last day outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to be a Holy Ghost joy, a Holy Ghost rejoicing. And this will be the testimony of Jesus Christ in the last day in a world full of gloom, in a world full of fear. When everything is shaken, the foundations and the roots are being plucked up. There will be a people walking out in Times Square outside this church and other churches where they've been prayed for and the, and all of the elders have a re-baptism and a re-anointing of the Holy Ghost and really stepping on the faith and saying, Jesus name be healed. And we have a people who believe that.
Glory to God. I see people giving up on being healed. People giving up and say, this is the cards that have been dealt to me in so many words. Folks, there are healing afflictions. We've talked about that. David said, if I had not been afflicted, I would not have sought the Lord. We know that, and we know the pattern of, of, of God's testing to get pure faith. We know that. But there has to come a time where we stand up and say, Lord Jesus, I'm claiming your word. You said you're going to rise up with healing in your wings. Now, are you under the wings of Jesus? Has he called you? Are you under his wings? We've lost our fight. I said we've lost our fight. God put Holy Ghost fight in us. The devil is not in control. God is in control. The devil has no power. He has no authority. If you weren't dancing by this time with Malachi, he'd be running down this aisle. And he said, the better part, there's still something more. <sighs> Son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. <clears throat> I don't know whether you're going to believe this or not, but you will go forth leaping like calves released from your stall. Now, here's what the King, King James says. Uh, uh, it says, you will go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. But the original Hebrew, and you get it in, almost, in American, New American Standard, and many, many, and, and most of the theologians that I've read say the very words of this. You will go forth leaping like calves released from the stall. <sighs> the, word, the word stall here in, in, in Hebrew is to be cornered, to go in circles in a limited space. I've seen calves in the stall, and they're looking out in the green grass, and there, there's a, a, a gate there, and it's locked. And, and they, they'll, they'll run around, round around, making their sounds and kicking, and some of them, when, what I saw, they were chewing at the gates. And this is what has happened. The devil has come to lock you in a stall. And there are so many people confined now. They are not out in the open. They don't have the joy of the Lord. They're not in the green pastures, not drinking the cool water. And I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost prophesied through Malachi, and he's going to tell you now, I speak his words through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There's coming a release. The stalls are all going to be broken and set free and, and he said you're going to go forth from your stall leaping that's what it says you're going to come leaping out of your stall there's that stall of hopelessness boredom that, that, that hopelessness that says where is God how long do I suffer? And, and, and Until finally that's the only testimony you have. You, the only word you have. You, you get up every morning and you have that same cloud hanging over your head. And, and you're locked in this stall. You don't have freedom. That's, your whole world is wrapped up. And I know many people. That's their whole world now. If you talk to them, that's all they can talk about. They can't talk about God. They can't talk about freedom. They can't even talk about the joy they once had. They're joyless. They're hopeless. They're in a stall. Locked up. There's this stall of bitterness. There are people now who can't come into the full blessing of the Lord. They can't be healed because of bitterness in their heart. God cannot and will not work where there's bitterness. The Bible calls it a gall or a poison. 
if you hear and this morning, you want a baptism of the Holy Spirit, a fresh outpouring, if you want to be released from your stall, you, you have got to honor, you have to acknowledge it and say, there's something in my heart towards somebody, there's something I'm not forgiven, there's, there's, there's something in my heart towards someone, brother, sister, get it out, or you're going to be locked in your stall, and you'll never get out. You're going around a little circle, a little circle full of meanness that spreads to other people. And I say it with love and I say it with grace. This is my biggest battle. And it's your biggest battle to keep out of your heart anything, anything of racial. Now, that's not my battle. But if there's any racial prejudice in you, if you're into the struggle that's going on here in the United States now, this racial thing is going on, folks, stay away from it. It's poison. It's poison. Stay away. It'll keep you locked up in a stall. But the Holy Ghost through the prophet said, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he's going to come and he's going to release you from the stall and you're going to come leaping out of your stall. Can I read it again to you? You will go forth leaping like calves, released. <laughs> Say it, released. Please. He wants to release you today. Everyone who's watching me, everyone who sees me, I point a finger right at you, a loving finger, the love of God, saying God wants to release you today, right now. He wants to release you from the fear of your affliction, from bitterness, from loneliness, from mourning, from whatever it may be. God's going to release his church. He's in the process of doing that right now. I said the Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Now you have a part. You can't just sit and, and say, well, I'm waiting for the Holy Ghost to do, I'm waiting for the Holy Ghost to release me. I've got fear in my heart. That, that, now, folks, there's, there's a human fear. It's a natural thing. It comes from being a father, a husband, uh, concerned of his family, and, and uh, a, a single person who working and sending money to the Philippines or Mexico or wherever it may be, and you have these fears, the human fears that come upon you. But God wants to release you from your fear before it takes root until it gets a hold of you and eats up your innermost being and, and kills your faith. There's something you have to do. And folks, I have proven this. I have proven it. You have to take a step now to make a joyful noise unto the Lord through praise. And I'm not talking about meditation. Yes, meditate. Thank God I meditate and walk. I walk and talk with Jesus sometimes for an hour at a time just quietly before him and let him speak to my soul. But there comes a time when the devil seems to have a foothold and when you can't get out and you're locked in and you're confined. The only way out of that confinement, the only way is, is, is to find a place, get somewhere alone with God. And, and I, I tell God, said, Lord, I'm sorry that this past week I haven't prayed like I should pray. I, I have felt locked up. So many things coming from so many directions never seems to stop. It just keeps coming at you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you're in that, and, and, and you, you go down, 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 till you don't want to hear anything. You want to go to Hawaii and find an island. You can't, nobody can find you. Go Fiji Islands and fish. In that time, you take a walk with God. And say, no, devil. No. I'm the son of the living God. I see the sun shining. I may not feel like it. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like shouting. I don't feel like anything. But I'm going to stand by faith. And I'm going to proclaim God is victorious. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Just stand. Lord, I'm going to shout. And I'm going to praise you. That's when the Holy Ghost comes. 
the Holy Spirit comes. Raise your hands. Come on. God, release this congregation. Release everyone who sees and hears. Right now, wherever they may be, open the doors. Open the gates. Oh, Son of Righteousness, come. Blessed be the name of the Lord, my God. Will you bless his name? I want you to call on his name. Call on his name. I want you... I will not, before a holy God, work a crowd and try to get you hyped up. That doesn't work. But it, it's in this rejoicing. It's in this opening up to the Holy Spirit and allowing a spirit of gladness and rejoicing in spite of how you feel. You have to rise above those feelings and take a step of faith.